Hi everyone and welcome. What you see over here is a whole bunch of trays that I've got worms in. I'm doing this worm composting, vermicomposting thing and I consider this to be my wormery. Besides those trays up on the shelves there's also this pretty big bag as you see. It's in its own little frame. It's the Vermi Bag Mini and in here I've got European night crawlers. I don't have many European night crawlers. The other, only other night crawler system I have is that tray right there. But this system here I've been targeting the 700th day of having these worms as the target for harvesting the castings in this system and moving those worms on their 700th day birthday to a new system and you know getting the castings that have been in here collecting for how many is it now 665 days that these worms have been in service working their way up from smaller containers to larger containers eventually ending up in here and Day 700 is five weeks away now, exactly. 35 days from now is when this population is going to reach their 700 days, at which point I'll be harvesting the system. And, uh, you know, I, on a couple occasions, I had already tried to bring this system down the path of being harvested. Let me turn some lights on here. So to that end, I had stopped feeding twice now. <laughs> so I usually like to have this sort of intermediate stage of um, what I call what I call foraging, where the worms don't get any food for a while. They're really left to focus on what's in there already, any little scraps of stuff. So rather than replenishing their food supply, they're left without any fresh food. And they're, um, they're hopefully being encouraged just to keep working the material down in the system. But it was 16 days ago when I came in here to feed, even though... Prior to that, 14 days, two weeks prior, I had already said no more food. I sort of took pity on the system. I came in here 16 days ago, gave it even more food. So in a way, technically, I had already targeted this foraging phase to begin 30 days ago, but I've already um, broken it once, and today I think I'm going to break it twice. And then I think I'm actually going to do a reset, and today is going to be the official start of foraging, even though there have been pretty large gaps in between the feedings each time. And, um, and now this time, too, the food that they're going to be receiving, I prepared a little special kind of um, ground-up processed um, mix here. It's mostly celery. There was a whole bunch of grapes. And whatever else was on hand, I was able to pick out of the, um, the crisper in the refrigerator. It seemed like it was going to go bad. I've got this little knife here so that I could chip off a chunk of it. We're going to give these guys a little bit of this really well-blended food. And hopefully it'll go quick you know I don't want to have a whole bunch of residual leftover food scraps in this thing when the time comes to finally harvest so I'm going to focus on giving them only food no bedding probably not even grit at this point the only bedding that they're going to get is what they've already got those few sheets of paper resting on top just make ourselves a little bit of space in here I always like having this little extra paper layer on top for some reason. It just seems to be a cool spot where the worms sometimes like to hang out. Although these worms don't seem that attracted to it. Maybe there just isn't enough moisture circulating within the bin to make this interesting. Usually in, in bins where there's a good amount of moisture circulating, trying to originally evaporate, make its way out into the air, but eventually hitting the covers, and you saw I had those two plastic bags covering things here, those don't allow for that moisture to escape, so forces this little bit of a recirculation to happen. So I don't know, what do you think? If I'm five weeks away now from wanting to harvest this bin, it does seem like it would benefit from being screened if there's still going to be stuff like this littered within it. But a lot of times I really don't sweat that, you know. I'll put, I'll put my castings away with little bits of broken up chunks of bedding, leftovers that, you know, would ideally not be there. I guess if you were buying sort of a commercial product, but this stuff's going to end up in my garden. It's going to get mixed in with the local dirt. There's little scraps of stuff that's, you know, eventually going to break down anyway littered in, in, in it, then I don't worry too much about it. There used to be a time when I would go through all my finished castings and filter them out and try to screen out all the large particles, put those bits and pieces back into the composting bin somewhere. 
you know, I have actually thought that that might be the way to go with this system. So, I'm still debating on the exact way I'm going to go about separating the castings from the worms. But since there's all kinds of weird little things in here, this is like a, the pit out of a, oops, out of a, like a, a plum or something smaller. It's not, not the size of a peach pit, but it's the same consistency, like a little rock hard ball. I am curious about what all this little tiny particle stuff is. <laughs> My hope is that it's just a bunch of res residual grit. So I, I throw in a pulverized eggshell as the grit in my systems. So my hope is that that's what we're seeing here. Sometimes I'll run a little time lapse just so I can more clearly visualize what I'm looking at. I'm wondering if it might benefit here too. Just let the camera run for a few minutes and I can see if these little white specks are stationary or if they're moving around. Yeah, why don't we do that really quick just for a few minutes. As you can see, I packed off a nice little chunk of this frozen material for them. I'm going to position this stuff in a few different spots, I think. I'll use my little knife to chip it off into little pieces. But before we do that, I thought I saw some remnants of old food stuff. And I kind of stopped digging at one point before I got to it. But I saw little scraps of green. I do remember that that last feeding 16 days ago was... A lot of leafy stuff that I thought would break down very quickly. It was the same reason I'm putting this sort of stuff in here is on the assumption that it's going to break down very quickly. This is that stuff, I believe. It just kind of falls apart in my fingers. It's very hard to tell what it is. I'm sure it doesn't have much longer to go before it's completely gone stick you know something like this is going to definitely come out if i end up screening this material before i sink down this chunk of food i'm going to see if i can bring in some of this really dry stuff that i can see on the edges because this stuff as it thaws out from what i remember this had a good amount of liquid in it so um you know this stuff i was scooping it out of the food process or all these little chunks of you know blended up vegetable and fruit chunks and I definitely um, remember bringing a good amount of the juice up, too, that had sort of liquefied underneath it. And it wasn't really that long ago, either. I had come in here, and I had placed, like, a whole tray, I believe, a whole tray of ice cubes all around the system. And uh, within a couple days, the whole system seemed really nice as far as the moisture was concerned. On this system, you know, because those bags that I'm covering up with don't really go right out to the edge or seal the outer edge that is where a little airflow comes and goes and uh, and it does cause the outer edges to dry a little bit I've, so, I've sometimes thought about maybe even layering on a couple more protective plastic coverings to make it even more difficult for air to evaporate and escape taking with the, taking with it all that extra moisture too but right now the material has a nice kind of flaky texture to it all right let's get this food in here and let the system get back to work like i said i'm gonna try to chip a few pieces away off this thing here eh, how does that look three three pieces yeah once this thing melts it's gonna you know leave behind a good amount of moisture it'll leave a nice damp area around itself so we'll just sort of get them a little bit submerged under the surface. I don't think we have to go crazy burying them. Each of those is going to have a nice kind of humid dampness zone around it. Should make it really attractive for any passerby worms to come by and check it out. And then eventually eat up the food that's there too. I wonder what it's going to result in too as far as the, um, the pieces of paper directly above where that food was added. All right, so 35 days away from harvest, and, uh, you know, I think in my tracking system, 
I always feel compelled to keep track of that first attempt 30 days ago to start the foraging process in this bin and then the little reminder in there from 16 days ago when I sort of broke down and gave this bin a break by adding some more food at that, set, at that point even though foraging had technically started and now too even though uh even though there have been a couple feedings over the past 30 days, including this one, I think I still think of the last 30 days as really the foraging process, but still giving them still a little bit of fast breaking down type materials that I know will be gone um, by the time harvest comes around. So I don't feel like I'm just going to be picking out chunks of food that could have just as easily been broken down by the worms if I had given it enough time. All right, well, that's it for today. I do feel like I'm just probably going to be compelled to check in here, maybe see how that pulverized food went over, see how much of it they've consumed. So maybe we'll check back in here in a little while. I don't think we'll be waiting five weeks before we come back in here. Some point or two prior to harvest, we'll probably be in here trying to make sure we're ready. So, all right, everyone, that's it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please remember to leave me a quick thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. Also consider subscribing to the channel too if you haven't done so already. Alright everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching.